friend, I'm Pastor Lance and welcome to FYI. In today's episode, I would like to share to you an inspiring story of a person who served the Lord mightily that even today, churches are named after him. Do you know who this person is in the Bible? His name is John. John the Baptist. He's popularly known as John the Baptist. That's not his surname. The reason why we call him John the Baptist is because in the New Testament, he was baptizing people into repentance to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. And today I would like to share to you three inspiring lessons that we can apply from his life so that we can serve the Lord mightily as well. And we are called by God uh, to serve him. Just like John the Baptist, he prepared for the first coming of the Lord. But we today are preparing for the second coming. And let's try to dig and try to look into the life of John so that we can learn things that we can apply today. Three things I would like to share. The first one is that he was not afraid to be dispensable. The reason why he was great at his ministry because in his mind he understand that he was not the main guy in his ministry. It was Jesus Christ all along. And one of the greatest mistakes that we can do in the service of the Lord is that when we experience a little success in our ministry, that we think that the kingdom of God could not expand, the ministry could not go forward without our involvement. The things around us in church and what we are doing could not flourish if we are not involved, thinking that the ministry is dependent on our skills, on our talents, on our presence. That is a dangerous thought in serving the Lord. Now, we find that John was so humble that when he was asked if he was the Messiah, he immediately pointed to Christ. That he, that he himself was not the Messiah, it was Jesus Christ. He even said in John 3.30, that Jesus Christ must become bigger, must become greater, and that He must become less and less. So much so that as you continue with the story of John the Baptist, you would find that he seemed to have faded away into the limelight. It was Jesus Christ now taking over and taking over the New Testament. Why? Because He was simply there to prepare the way. To prepare the way for the Messiah. He was so humble that he even said in John 1 27 that he is not worthy to untie the sandals of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know who untie the sandal of a person? Their servants. And he himself said, I am not even worthy to be a servant of Christ. Can you imagine that? Are you are you challenged right now to be the center of your ministry? If there's anything much more than Christ as a center of our ministry, then we have lost sight of what really matters the most. Are we a celebrity or are we a servant? John the Baptist has a servant mentality. And he always points to Christ. He understands his role. He is simply a piece of a puzzle of God's greater plan. That's the reason why he was so effective. He was not afraid to be dispensable. The second thing we can find and be inspired from his life is that he was not afraid to be different. He was different. In his time, I'm sure people find him odd. Why? He dressed different. He eats different. The Bible tells us that he eats, his diet is different, locusts and honey. I'm sure a lot of people today have a different type of diet, but I'm sure back then that was so bizarre. He eats locusts and honey, wild honey. He dressed, according to the Bible, he, he wear clothes that are made of camel's hair. He lived in the wilderness. Can you imagine that? While well, the world today will paint us with the same color, we have to st stand out. We are called to be different. The Bible tells us we are not to conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed. Be different. Don't be afraid to be the odd person. If the world is going to the right, don't be afraid to go to the left. It might be difficult, 
But rest assured, you will be with good company with John the Baptist. The third thing we find inspiring in his life, why he was, was so mighty in the service of the Lord, is that he was not afraid to declare the word. He did not sugarcoat the word. At one point in his ministry, he even called the Pharisees, You brood of vipers. There's no other way to say it in a nicer way. But that's it. He said that because that's who they are. And he even called out Herod. Herod King Herod because of, of his uh, sinful lifestyle. He had to declare it because that's what the word is saying. And today, sometimes we are afraid to offend people with God's word. You are not called to offend people, but the word of God is naturally offensive to others. So let us l declare the wor word without fear, even if it means sometimes putting ourselves in a position where, just like John the Baptist, you know, where, where he ended up because he was not afraid to declare the word, he ended up in prison, even to the point where he lost his head. And sometimes today, we are so afraid, even in just even posting a verse in Facebook, sharing the gospel to others. We have lost sight of what is important in our ministry. And that is to declare the word and let it change and transform others. Now, when he was in prison, if you read the story in the, in, in the, in, in the Gospels, when he was in prison, there seems to be a point where he doubted the Lord Jesus Christ. He sent two of his disciples to Jesus Christ to ask him, to ask Jesus, are you really the Messiah? If not, tell us. We'll wait for someone else. We'll look for someone else. We'll be looking for someone else. And when I read that part of the story, it made me realize that John the Baptist is just like any person that can doubt the Lord. But you know what he did that was so amazing? Is that when he, he, when he was in doubt, he cling into Christ. He seek the truth and stood firm in the faith to the end. He went to Christ. So when we are in doubt, when in the service of the Lord, you're put in a place where you are now doubting. Does this even make sense? Is he really the Christ that is worth serving? Seek the truth in the Lord Jesus Christ. Cling on to that truth and stand firm to that truth. And again, you will be in good company. Now the success of John's ministry is very difficult to quantify. Just like in our ministries today, it's not an easy, there's no easy way to quantify, to measure our ministry's effectiveness. Except that we remain faithful to God's call in our life. And so I hope and pray, just like John the Baptist, you will not be afraid to be dispensable, not be afraid to be different, and not be afraid to declare the Word of God. May the Word of God continue to inspire you today. God bless us all.